In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good afternoon, everybody. Let us remember we are always in God's presence, but especially so here before the Blessed Sacrament. And let's, let us ask God's forgiveness for when we have not lived like disciples. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have bestowed on us paschal remedies, endow your people with heavenly gifts, so that possessed of free, perfect freedom, they may rejoice in heaven over what gladdens them now on earth, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. <clears throat> a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. <clears throat> On the day of Pentecost, Peter said to the Jewish people that the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. They asked Peter and the other disciples, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is made to you and all your children and to all those far off whomever the Lord God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to live to deliver them from death preserve them in spite of famine. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. 
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Mary stayed outside the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she bent over the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head of the th and one at the feet of where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there, but did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you carry him away, tell me where you laid him, and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But I go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my Father and to your Father, to my God and your God. Mary went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then reported what he had told her. The Gospel of the Lord. We have in these days a celebration of Easter that continues, as I mentioned yesterday, for eight days, the octave of the solemnity of Easter. It continues with the same intensity and the same fervor all this week until next Monday. The whole Easter season is about 50 days. It is 50 days until we get to Pentecost. It is considered to be like a Sunday celebration in the liturgy all that time. What we see in the first reading is how the apostles seemed to wake up to the fact of what had happened, up to the point where we see them now. They had gone through a, a great deal of meaningful time. They had seen Jesus with them. They had known the tension with the Pharisees. They had accompanied him as far as the Last Supper, and then most of them abandoned the Lord. And then they began to experience his presence with them anew after the resurrection. Now we see how they have grown in their faith and are able to speak boldly to the other people and begin to catechize them and to baptize them. So it is as though they have awakened to what is the reality of the situation. Sometimes we know people who are going through something and everybody else seems to know it but that person. One example is that uh, sometimes somebody with an addiction has to go through all sorts of trials, maybe been talked to a bunch of times by the family, where they have tried to help him, tried to intervene, and then the person continues to do the same thing to himself or herself again and again and again. And it always seems that when the light goes on for them, when they begin to understand, it seems to be that around that time, people have started to abandon them and let them sink down, basically, because they couldn't make any progress. And when the person finally comes to their senses, it's almost as though they, there is no one left to help them, nobody who uh, would, would intervene again 
because they had grown tired of it. It happens in all sorts of milder ways, but once in a while you see how it's a dramatic thing that goes on. The family finally says they've had enough, I give up. And then after a while, the person sort of wakes up to their reality. Well, everybody sees what's going on and a lot of people understand, but they can't seem to get through to the person who is most in need. We might compare that to the way the apostles came to know their faith and believe in Jesus. After they had time to reflect on what had happened, after they had been with the Lord again and ate and drank with him after the resurrection, after many good examples of his presence continuing with them, finally, in these last days, they go about beginning their work of preaching, catechizing, teaching the people, and baptizing. All of us celebrate this intensity and this fervor of Easter together. Maybe we too need to wake up to the reality of what the Lord does and has done for us in our lives, to be grateful and to celebrate the Lord's presence here among us and to try to take to heart the lesson the apostles learned, which is to believe bravely and speak up for their faith. Maybe there's a lesson in that for all of us so that we can begin to enter into this new life that we're promised, that begins even now with our celebration of this time of year and the church's life and God's presence within us. Let us pray for all our needs in general and personally. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who are sick in any way, especially maybe those with addictions, but we remember especially those with the coronavirus, let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have passed away from among our families and friends, for those that we might know and those we don't know who have died from the virus, let us pray to the Lord. And for what else should we pray today? For all these our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, our soul waits on the Lord, and you are our help and our protection. Help us to trust that you are always with us now, maybe more than ever in this season of Easter, through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. And my brothers and sisters, that, that we bless this Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. The fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all who serve your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. <clears throat> Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Hear us, Almighty God, and as you have bestowed on your family the perfect grace of baptism, so prepare their hearts for the reward of eternal happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.